Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Freddy Espinoza with Freestyle Living Video and Photography Service. And today I'm gonna give you a flash tutorial so then that way you can learn how to use your flash right off the back. So here we go. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure your flash is working right from the get-go before you put it on your camera. So let's go ahead and turn our flash on. Just hold down that power button and then you're going to want to push this little red button and see if your flash fires when you press it. All right, so it looks like mine did. So I know it's working. Now we're going to go into the settings and make sure we have them set right. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is change the mode on our flash. Basically, all you have to do is click the mode button here and you'll start seeing the settings change. And the one you want to stop on is the one with the big M. That basically means manual mode and you'll have more control when you're taking pictures at your event. All right, so the next step is to figure out what these numbers mean. So basically, the higher the number, the less power you're gonna have. The lower the number, the more power you're gonna have. So if you're in a big venue and it's really dark, you're gonna wanna drop that down all the way to one. But if you're in a pretty light lit room, you're just gonna basically have that at 128 and you're not gonna have a problem at all. So just go ahead, when you have that on your camera, that's where you're gonna to wanna to be making adjustments by just twisting your knob or pressing up and down on your buttons and that's gonna change your power settings. So you can go ahead and test that right now if you like. All you gotta do is hit your button at 128 and then you'll see the power is very soft and then when you bring that down to one, you press it again and you'll see that the power is very strong. So another thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that you ordered the right flash mount for your camera. As you can see, I have two of the same flash right here, but they both have two different mounts. One's for a Sony and one's for a Canon. If yours isn't right for your camera, it might not work, but sometimes you can mix and match them. Like this Canon one, I can put it on my Sony, and this Sony one, obviously I can put it on my camera with no problems. Uh, the only difference is, it gets a little funky there when you use the Canon one. I'm not gonna go too deep into those settings, but I just want you guys to double check and make sure you bought the right mount. Next thing you're probably wondering is your zoom. Where should you have your zoom settings? Basically, that's up to you. 24 is really tight, and the larger you go, the wider that flash is gonna spread. You can basically see it on the top of your flash. As you're changing your zoom, you'll see it go from really wide to really small. So go ahead and click your zoom button and then spin your knob and you'll start seeing that thing change. See, that's really wide and that's at 70. And then when I bring it down in to 24, it brings it up pretty tight, pretty small. So just go ahead and mess with it on your camera. I usually leave it wide just because I feel like the wider the spread, the more people that it's gonna capture and the better it's gonna be. So if that works for you guys, that works for me. But if you feel like different settings are gonna work for you, feel free to go ahead and change that. All right, so you guys are probably ready for the next step, which is putting your flash on your camera. So let's go ahead and do that. If you don't know how to mount your flash, basically all you do is you grab the flash, make sure you loosen this dial right here, and you slide it right on the top. And then once it's in, it's in. And it should be all ready to go. All right, so once you got your flash on your camera, the next thing you wanna do is change the settings on your camera. And the first thing you're gonna do is set your shutter speed to 160. The reason why is because if you go any faster, you might get these weird dark lines while you're shooting your flash, and you're not gonna like that. And the next thing is, once you have it at 160, you're basically gonna leave it there, and you're not gonna touch it after that. The only thing you're gonna to wanna to be messing with is your aperture and your ISO throughout your event. That's what's gonna help you get more light or lose more light. But also with flash, you can always control the flash on top if you want more power. So instead of cranking up the ISO, maybe first crank up your flash settings just to see if that, if that little lighting you get from your flash is gonna help out a lot better. And also just another tip, if you feel like your flash is dying a lot at an event while you're shooting and it's not reloading quick enough for you, what you wanna do is maybe bump up your ISO and the flash bring the power a little bit down so the batteries aren't too worn out because if you have a power as low as one the whole time, you're gonna burn through those batteries pretty fast and it's best for you to have it at a mid-range which could be like eight 
or anywhere in between those numbers. Um, if you have it at 128, that's perfect because that's the lowest you can go. And honestly, it's going to save you a lot of battery power. So if you tried to pull the trigger on your camera already and try to see if your flash would take a picture and it didn't, there's probably a few reasons why. The first reason is going to be because on your settings on your camera, you probably have your flash setting turned off. So you're going to want to go inside your camera and turn that on. I'm going to go ahead and show you the icon that's on mine and yours is going to pretty much look close to the same thing. So here we go. This is my function button. I go ahead and click it. As you can see, the flash icon is here. It's actually turned on already. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click it and show you maybe what yours might look like. If yours is this one on top with the circle and the lightning bolt through it, then that means you need to go ahead and turn it on and you got to put it where the lightning bolt and the arrow is pointing down. That's how you're going to get your flash turned on. One tip I have for you guys is never point your flash at the clients like this. The reason why is because you're going to get like a beginner style flash and it's not going to look too good. I recommend you point it to the ceiling and then power that to bounce off the ceiling onto your subject. The reason why is because it really evens it out and it looks 10 times better. Trust me, go ahead, mess around with your flash right now. Go around your house, take pictures of your family, your friends, your husband, your wife, whoever you're around and go ahead and test that um, setting with this pointing to the ceiling. And trust me, you're gonna see the big difference. But thank you guys for watching my tutorial today. I hope that helped. Leave any comments at the bottom if you, there's something I didn't answer. But thank you guys for everything. You guys stay blessed, don't stress, don't worry about the steps, have faith in Jesus. Peace.